After being a little quiet for quite some time, Cherry Mobile is back in the world of smartphones. And the first device in months that they released is this, the Cherry Mobile Aqua S9 Max. And this handset is priced at 9,899 pesos. And at that price point, it is equipped with some of the very best specs that we have ever seen in this price segment. So hi, this is Peter of GizGuy.com and let's review the Cherry Mobile Aqua S9 Max. Before we unbox the device, if mapapansin ninyo, Cherry Mobile didn't use their usual flare branding on this handset. I think uh, they want to show us that this is a new device. This is a new line. And marami silang ginawang bagay dito to make it more appealing sa kanilang target market. But let's see. Actually, we already unboxed this device a few weeks back. But for those who missed our Facebook Live, we will do a re-unboxing this time. So in front of the box, you will see the design of the phone. And then the new Aqua branding of Cherry Mobile. Here at the bottom, it shows yung kanyang IMEI. And then it says here that it is the jade green color. And at the back, this is what I like. Why? Cherry Mobile included nearly everything that we should know about its specifications. It is equipped with the MediaTek Helio G90 gaming chipset. This processor is a 12 nanometer processor that is commonly found on bang for the buck phones under 12,000 pesos. Why this chip is considered as fast and we'll talk more about that later. It is clocked at 2.05 GHz. And then you get a 6.53 inch true view display. And then it has an FHD plus resolution. That means na 1080p panel lang ginamit ni Cherry Mobile dito. Hindi niya tiniped unlike other smartphones found in the under 10,000 pesos price point na naka HD plus display pa rin. And then 19 by 9 teardrop scratch resistant display din daw siya. In particular, Cherry Mobile told us that it is equipped with a Gorilla Glass 3 protection at the back and in front. So aside from the display, pati yung likuran niya, Gorilla Glass 3 protected. And then you get a 48MP main camera with an 8MP ultra wide lens, 120 degree. And then 2MP depth sensor, 2MP macro camera. And if gagamitin mo yung kanyang super pixel technology or interpolation, you can get a 108MP resolution na photos. So in front naman, meron siyang 32 megapixels. Again, hindi tinipid ni Cherry Mobile. And then the storage is 1 to 8 gigs, UFS 2.1. Medyo mabilis yon compared to a lot of other storage options sa budget category na lower than UFS. May iba pa nga EMMC pa. And then it has 4 gigabytes of RAM. That's enough. And then it has liquid cooling technology to keep the performance of this handset in check. That means na even if you're playing games, hindi siya mabilis iinit theoretically. And we will test that later. And then you get a micro SD slot. Meron din siya micro SD slot up to 256GB. Dual LTE, USB Type-C, and it has 18 watts quick charge support. So that's nice to know. And since it has quick charge, I think it can fill up its 5130 mAh LiPo battery a little faster compared to other smartphones with slow charging pero malaki yung battery capacity. And then dito ako medyo intrigued. It has the Smart PA audio chip. So, it supports high resolution audio and that's very rare on smartphones found in the under 10,000 pesos price range. Actually, it has a lot of specs that's not common at this price point. And para dun sa mga nagwa-wonder, I would like to highlight na Cherry Mobile partnered with Google to produce their phones and this is one of them as you can see here it has the google play protect program logo and that means that this device will get security updates and that's nice to know at least you get that protection from unwanted malwares viruses and more para alam mong secure yung telepono mo okay ang haba ng intro ko let's proceed now with the unboxing the first thing that you will see is obviously the handset itself it has a usb type c cable and then USB-A yung kanyang kabilang port. Also, you will get this charger. This charger is an 18 watts charger. And as you can see here, marami siyang supported na output. That means na meron din siyang backward compatibility in case na you want to charge other smartphones with 
uh, lower power requirement. That's nice. And then we saw this leaflet. I think this is the quick user guide. So just skip it. It has a lot of information that you might need in case you are coming from a basic phone and you are not yet familiar with smartphones. Okay, to just keep it. And then this is interesting. This is one of the few phones with a tempered glass included in the package. So this is a nice addition and not that common, especially on budget smartphones. And then what else is in here? It has an earphones. So it has this earphones with microphones. So and then there's a single button remote. That's nice. And then the last item here is this. This is the SIM ejector tool. This is a very handy tool that you will need to open the SIM tray slot of this device. So the SIM tray slot here. So here, we will open it. So it is a triple slot tray. So you get a slot for the SIM card here, and then SIM card here, nano SIMs yun. And then you also get this micro SD slot. As mentioned earlier, its packaging is near complete. However, there's no free case this time, unlike other budget smartphones. But that's still fine. At least what you're getting here is a phone with some of the top specs under 10,000 pesos. For the build and design, for me, the materials used by Cherry Mobile here are considered as premium, especially at this price point. Why? There are very few phones na merong glass back design, and this is one of them. And in front, glass din yung kanyang front, and it is protected by Gorilla Glass 3. Actually, even its back panel is protected by Gorilla Glass 3, as mentioned earlier. That means na it won't be that prone to fingerprint scratches. So, let's say, even if you don't have a case, hindi siya basta-basta magagasgas unless gasgasay mo talaga siya and pinilit mo siyang gasgasin. Only its plastic frame is not that premium for me, pero... Understandable yun, why this is a very affordable smartphone. Design-wise, it is a pretty phone for the price, but hindi ko kayo sisihin if you will say that it looks like the Redmi Note 8 Pro, why very similar yung kanilang back and front design. But there are a few differences. The Redmi Note 8 Pro is slimmer at 8.79mm, and it is a little lighter at 199.8 grams. The reason behind that is the Chai Mobile Aqua S9 Max is equipped with a larger battery capacity. In particular, it has a 5,130 mAh battery versus the 4,500 mAh battery of the Redmi Note 8 Pro. On paper, makapal siya at 10.15 mm, but for me, it is slim looking pa rin. Why? It has this 3D curved glass back design na Actually, masarap din sa kamay aside from it gives this one an illusion na manipis siya. In the front, as you can see, malaki yung kanyang display. Actually, it is 6.53 inch big. And it has a notch on top. That notch is carrying the 32MP shooter of this device. And the bezels for me are considered as reasonably slim, especially on top and on the sides. Yung shin bezel niya is a little thicker than what I wanted. But I would just like to note that this is a budget smartphone, not a mid-range smartphone. If this is a mid-range smartphone, maybe magre-reklamo ako ng konti dahil medyo makapal yung kanyang shin. But again, as a budget smartphone, considered as understandable yun. Also, I noticed that Cherry Mobile added a pre-installed screen protector. So that's a side puff from its tempered glass. This means that your phone is protected out of the box na agad even if you don't install the tempered glass. But of course, I would advise you to install that tempered glass to make its display tougher pa. I would also like to highlight na hindi masyado nakaangkat yung kanyang cameras at the back. Actually, near flat na siya eh. That's impressive ah. Actually, for a budget smartphone, maglagay ka na lang ng case dito, hindi na basta-basta magagasgas yung cameras nito eh. On top, it has a single microphone hole here. And below, you will find its single speaker grill along with the USB Type-C connector. Yes guys, reversible port na siya. And then there's another microphone here. And there's a slot for your favorite 3.5mm headphones. And at right, it has this volume up and volume down keys. 
and you also get this textured power key. So, alam mo agad na it is the power key even if it is in your pocket and let's say, for example, you're reaching for it. Also, I noticed that yung buttons niya maganda yung placement. Ha? It is intact and I feel that this is a little durable then. And at left, like what we showed you earlier, it has a pinhole here for your triple tray slot that will enable you to put your micro SD slot as well as the dual nano SIM slot on this smartphone. In general, this is a smartphone na hindi mo ikakahiya despite its 10,000 pesos price range. Actually, iba pa nga nabili to ng super mura at 6999 nung first day sale niya. Sobrang swerte na mga nakabili noon. And then, last 12-12, binaba ko dito Cherry Mobile yung price nito with more freebies at 7999. Swerte pa rin yung nakabili noon. And actually, even at 10,000 pesos, for me, this is considered as impressive. For the multimedia experience, yung display niya, it is considered as pretty good. Unlike a lot of budget smartphones na HD plus resolution pa rin, Cherry Mobile equipped this device with a 2.5D curve LCD IPS screen na full HD plus ang resolution. That simply means na sharper siya in details. And as you can see here, it isn't pixelated at all. Maganda ang kanyang resolution. That's actually pretty nice. Actually impressive yon for a budget smartphone. For the picture quality, actually neutral yung colors niya. It is just a little paler than what I'm used to. Kasi, let's say for example, galing ka sa mga AMOLED screens, medyo paler talaga ng konti yung IPS LCD panels. But that's understandable. Those who want a uh, phone with close to accurate colors, maybe you will like this a little better. That's rare for phones na under 10,000 pesos. But if you want yung talagang lifelike talaga and truer colors, invest. Invest for a high-end smartphone. Doon ka makakita ng talagang sobrang solid na display. Actually, yung screen niya for me is already good enough for your Netflix consumption. Maybe you wanna play YouTube videos. Or maybe just view the images that you took as well as videos. For gaming naman, it doesn't have a high refresh rate display. Hindi siya 90Hz, hindi rin siya 120Hz. But again, that's super understandable as almost all under 10,000 pesos smartphones walang high refresh rate display. Meron yung iba high refresh rate display nga sila but HD plus naman yung resolution. Personally, I will go for the higher resolution over the uh, high refresh rate pero HD yung kanyang resolution. Actually, even yung viewing angles niya is okay for me. Eh. Another thing, this thing can go really bright yung kanyang display. Uh, okay siya even if you use it outdoors. Basta hindi lang talaga nakatutok directly yung sunlight sa panel mo. Makakakita ka ng maigi. For audio, meron siyang single down firing speaker located here. And for me, actually it's pretty loud naman and actually pretty clear din yung kanyang uh, overall quality. And one weakness, it isn't that okay when it comes to playing music with bass. And cool lang siya sa tinatawag nating sub-bass response. But uh, very understandable naman yun for budget smartphones. Bihirang-bihira ka makakita ng budget smartphones with a strong bass. Also, I would have liked it better sana if, let's say, stereo speaker setup yung ginamit ni Cherry Mobile here for a more immersive listening experience kasi nga stereo siya and wider yung soundstage niya. But again, it's understandable for the price as this is a budget smartphone. A uh, note lang din na medyo may konting ticks siya pag nagtodo ka sa loudness. Yung weakness niya sa speakers for me was neutralized by its uh, headphone audio performance. Why? Meron nga siyang tinatawag nating Smart PA Hi-Fi Audio Amplifier. And bihirang bira yun for budget smartphones. It enhances the quality of your headphone or earphones music listening. And for me, medyo malakas yung kanyang driving power. Ha? I only needed around 50 to 60% of loudness to make some of my uh, multi-driver earphones shine. And that's impressive kasi hindi naman lahat ng smartphones 
at this price point, kaya patakbuhin yung mga medyo komplikadong type of earphones and headphones. And this is one of them. And that's rare for a sub 10,000 peso smartphone. I would also like to know that it made the sound of my earphones a little warmer. And yung warmer type of sound signature na yon is commonly found on higher end types of smartphones and that's very nice to know for calls yung kanyang ear speaker quality is average for me it is pretty clear okay naman yung voice nung tinatawagan ko and in general wala naman ako reklamo but for me ang kanyang slight weakness is the quality of voice it records why take a listen here Mic test, 1, 2, 3. Mic test, 1, 2, 3. Hi, this is Peter of GizGuide.com and this is a sample voice recording coming from the Chair Mobile Aqua S9 Max. And as you heard, medyo cloudy ng konti yung bosses na na-record ni Cherry Mobile Aqua S9 Max. It isn't the clearest around. For calls, okay lang yun. But let's say, for example, you're trying to shoot a vlog. I suggest that you get an external microphone para clearer yung audio mo kasi maganda rin yung camera sa device na to that we will talk about now. So at the back, this is one of the few phones under 10,000 pesos na mayroong 48MP f1.79 shooter. And that shooter is not a Samsung lower-end type of sensor kagaya ng ibang uh, under 10,000 pesos phones na may 48MP cameras. This one, it is equipped with a Sony IMX582 sensor. That sensor is the slightly lower end version ng 586. Ang difference lang nila is yung 586 it records up to 60 fps na 4K. This one it records 4K at 30 fps. Pero sa picture quality halos parehas lang sila. That's super rare for budget smartphones. And then you will also get an 8MP f2.2 120 degree ultra wide angle sensor for ultra wide shots obviously. And yung ultra wide angle camera niya may auto focus feature then like its main camera. So faster focusing system. And then you will also find a 2MP 4CM macro sensor. Ito hindi ko masyado ginagamit to but I won't make reklamo kasi okay lang naman. At least meron siyang 2MP macro sensor in case you need to take super close-up shots. And then you will also get a 2MP f2.4 depth sensor for your depth effect or yung natawag nating background or or bokeh shot. For camera UI, as you can see, it isn't the prettiest around. Merong ibang camera UIs na mas maganda tingnan kaysa dito. But for me, that's okay. At least madali siyang gamitin. As you can see here, one click lang. Ultra wide shot na. Then, meron din siyang beauty mode. My, of course, video mode. And then, my AI din siya for auto scene detection. And I would also like to note na meron siyang iba pang camera modes here like the Pro Mode, 8 MP camera, the interpolation, HDR, Night Mode, and other filters. Yung kanyang Night Mode, this shoots uh, photos for a few seconds. Even if handheld ka, it will take better low light images. And then I also like to note that there is a pretty decent na pro mode with adjustment for white balance, ISO up to 3200, exposure negative 3 to positive 3. Although yung kanyang shutter speed could have been better, uh, sana at least meron siya up to 8 seconds, but ito 1 over 5 of a second lang. And here, okay din kasi meron din siyang manual focusing uh, tech. So if you want to do a manual focus shot, meron siya. Uh, yun lang, medyo nabitin lang ako dun sa kanyang shutter speed adjustments. But, okay lang in general. So now, I'll show you some of the camera samples we took using the Cherry Mobile Aqua S9 Max. In terms of picture quality, for me, gumagaling talaga si Cherry Mobile sa pagtimpla ng kulay. Eh. You will notice it if, let's say for example, you take a shot using the main camera of the phone, and then you compare it with the ultra-wide camera of the device. As you can see here, very similar yung color ng main camera to its ultra-wide camera. Unlike other smartphones na minsan medyo nagiging saturated, desaturated, or minsan hindi control yung exposure. But here, very controlled yung exposure niya and this is natural looking overall. Ang galing ng color science ni Cherry Mobile and that's commendable for a budget smartphone. Generally, for daylight images, very strong yung performance ng cameras ni Aqua S9 Max. Wala akong reklamo. Detailed siya. Totoo yung kulay as mentioned earlier. 
and wala siya masyadong artifacts. It doesn't look like a fake image. Hindi siya cartoonish as well. For close-up shots, actually, even if you don't use its macro mode anymore, kaya niya eh. Kaya niya mag-take ng close-up images eh. It packs more details pa compared to its macro mode. Yung macro mode niya only advisable to use in daylight. And as you can see here, natural din yung kanyang background blur even if you don't use the portrait mode. For indoor images, as long as you are using its 48 MP shooter, very 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 detailed siya. I emphasize that kasi ang ganda ng details na pinoduce nung cameras ng phone to, even under hindi masyadong ideal lighting condition. Also, if you will use the zoom, okay lang din siya eh. Hindi siya masyadong nag artifact but merong konti, but okay lang, understandable for the price. At least, it is still considered as pretty detailed overall. If merong weakness yung kanyang point-and-shoot mode, it is in low-light shooting. Why? Nagde-degrade talaga yung quality ng mga images that we took. For example, this shot, medyo blurred na siya, medyo grainy na siya, and for me, underexposed as well. Fortunately, merong solution si Cherry Mobile for that, and yun yung kanyang handheld night mode that we demoed earlier sa camera UI. This mode enabled this handset to take Images in the dark na clearer with better dynamic range, proper exposure, and of course, sharper details. It isn't the best night mode, don't get me wrong, but it helps. And this type of night mode is considered as alright and pretty much decent overall for a budget smartphone. Sadly, yung night mode na yun, it is not available for its ultrawide camera. So I suggest na not to use its ultrawide camera in super low light condition. For selfies naman, I would like to know that its 32MP shooter is quite detailed in daylight. Actually, even for some indoor shots, as long as you are in a proper lighting condition, the quality of selfies are very nice. And yung colors niya, again, ito talaga yung strength ni Cherry. Maganda yung kanyang color reproduction. Hindi siya OA, hindi siya overexposed, and natural looking siya overall. Like other selfie cameras, meron din siyang face beauty mode, meron din siyang portrait selfie for the background blur effect. Although I don't usually use them because uh, mas maganda pa rin yung natural for me. And in low light naman, it is decent. Of course, magde-degrade ng konti yung kanyang quality but if matapatan ka let's say ng uh, ilaw, ilaw in the dark, okay pa rin eh. Quality pa rin eh. Good quality pa rin siya and quite detailed pa rin. For videos, it records up to 4K 30fps using its primary shooter. But for its ultra-wide camera, you can only shoot up to 1080p at 30fps. But that's alright, kasi this is a budget smartphone naman. And very few yung budget smartphones with a 4K capability. The weakness of its 4K capability, even if it is detailed, especially in daylight condition, is wala siyang optical image stabilization. So that means that you won't get... Uh, stabilized shots for videos. Medyo shaky siya ng konti. If magsiswitch ka to 1080p at 30fps, mag-i-improve ng konting-konti yung kanyang stabilization. But hindi siya talaga significant at all. And I still suggest na if meron kang gimbal, use it if you want to shoot videos using this handset. For selfies, mas okay siya for me. Mas control ko yung stabilization niya. And note this, yung kanyang Field of view, hindi narrow, unlike other budget selfie camera phones. This suggests na pretty decent siya for vlogging kasi maganda rin yung details niya, okay din yung colors niya. And I think a lot of the budget vloggers will enjoy using its front camera for selfie videos. It isn't perfect, hindi pa rin siya super stabilized, but again, decent. For performance, this is a handset that won't let you down. So even for less, this handset performs really well. Very smooth yung kanyang operation. Hindi ako nagkakaroon ng problema sa pag-open ng apps. Mabilis siya. And it can multitask a little then. So for me, okay siya in terms of that. Why it is using the, again, MediaTek Helio G90 t processor. And that is arguably the fastest chipset that you will find under 10,000 pesos. Meron pang laban si Qualcomm dito. It is the Snapdragon 720, but it is only found on one smartphone for the price. So technically, actually dalawa lang talaga sila na phones under 10,000 pesos with na brand new that you can get na mabilis talaga at this price point. Yung RAM niya at 4GB is just decent. I would have liked it better obviously if it has 6 gigs or 8 gigs of RAM, but let us all remember that this is a budget smartphone and na-compensate naman yun ng kanyang powerful chipset. And yung chipset na to, mabilis talaga. It is faster than a lot of uh, 
Qualcomm mid-range chips. For storage, I like then that it has 1 to 8 gigs. So that means that you can store a lot of apps, games, music, videos, and photos. So let's say, for example, you install heavy games here like the Call of Duty Mobile, Genshin Impact, NBA 2K20. Okay lang yun. Kahit wala kang micro SD slot, 1 to 8 gigs is likely more than enough. If kulang man yun, meron naman siyang expandable storage. So mag micro SD ka na lang. For gaming, this is one of the fastest. And this is one of the best actually at this price point. And for me, actually, it is the best. Why kaya niya i-run most of the heavy games at maximum settings? Let's say, for example, NBA 2K20. There are very few phones that can run this at max settings. And very few frame drops lang siya. Birang bira ko actually maranasan. Even if you're not in a room na air condition, kaya niya rin eh. Kasi meron siyang liquid cooling solution. Actually, even after playing for quite some time, iinit siya. It gets warm but not hot. Yan yung keyword ah. Warm, not hot. So, wala siyang overheating. And even if it gets warm, after playing the game, uh, ang bilis bumaba ng temperature niya. Those who are wondering, kaya niya si Call of Duty Mobile even under very high graphic quality with very high frame rate. Meron din yung depth of field and then ragdoll and real-time shadows. Kaya niya. Decent din kanyang performance and magkakaroon ka lang ng lag. Let's say for example, pangit yung yung internet connectivity. But if maayos naman yung yung internet connection, smooth siya. Genshin Impact, for those who are asking, it can play this game. Although not the maximum settings possible, but at least it can run it. Unlike several budget phones na nag struggle siya patakbuhin at higher graphic quality. The other thing that made this handset special for the price, it's its battery capacity. Legit yung kanyang 5,130 mAh battery. Why it can last for up to 2 days, legit na 2 days, on a single charge. Let's say that you are just using social media apps and hindi ka naman masyadong nag-take ng photos and videos or play ng games. Even if naka-Wi-Fi ka all the time, kaya niya 2 days straight. Ganon siya kakunat. And let's say for example, heavy usage naman, you watch a lot of videos, you play games, kaya pa rin niya mag for more than a day on a single charge. Actually, in our PC Mark Work battery life test, it lasted for 19 hours and 2 minutes. That's one of the highest na we recorded under 10,000 pesos. There are very few phones that can match this. Most ng 5,000 mAh phones or uh, 6,000 mAh phones, mga 16 hours, 17 hours, 18 hours, uh, bihira yung umaabot ng 20 plus hours. At 19 hours, this is above average. For charging, with the help of this 18 watts power adapter, it can charge the phone from 0 to 50% in around 30 minutes. And then after that, babagal na yung kanyang charging to help it charge safely. And yung total, naka 2 hours kami and 15 minutes. Still not bad considering na this has a large 5,100 30 milliampers battery. Obviously, I would have liked it better if 30 watts charging siya. But that's better than other smartphones. Actually, most smartphones under 10,000 pesos with a 10 watts or maybe even 5 watts charging na mabagal talaga. For connectivity, it has Wi-Fi, dual band Wi-Fi yon, so 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. Meron din siyang 4G LTE and yung 4G LTE niya has the band 28 700 megahertz support. That means na even if merong tick wall sa area mo or you are in a closed uh, room, papasok pa rin ng LTE as long as decent yung connectivity sa area mo. Aside from that, it has Bluetooth 5.0, medyo newer gen type of Bluetooth for a more stable connection. And then of course, it has OTG, may FM radio din siya, GPS, GLONASS, and dual SIM slots. The UI for me is alright near stock like siya. Android 10, the usual Android 10, I think meron din siyang dark mode, so that's, uh, that's nice to know. Meron siyang dark theme mode, so turn it on if you want to not strain your eyes. And then, marami naman siyang features, and I do not see a lot of bloatwares here. Actually, halos wala eh. Very clean yung kanyang UI. Meron lang siya nitong game space, but for some gamers naman, maybe... Uh, useful to game turbo pala uh, that's the game enhancement uh, feature of cherry mobile that will optimize games and prevent uh, notifications 
or maybe calls for uninterrupted gaming experience. Aside from that, wala na ako nakitang ibang bloatwares and pretty responsive naman siya overall. And at least yung camera UI niya, like what I showed you earlier, it is quite robust naman in features. Maybe my only concern here is yung kanyang software updates. Likely, yung mga security patches, walang problema eh. Actually, nakakuha na ako ng update to improve its performance. What I am talking about is yung major updates. Hindi pa ganun kasolid yung reputation ni Cherry Mobile when it comes to major Android updates. I am hoping na sana even at least one major update makakuha tong device na to. At 9,999 pesos, ito yung one of the few phones na halos wala akong reklamo. Or if magre-reklamo man ako, unreasonable na ako. Why napakamura niya. And yung specs na binigay ni Cherry Mobile dito and yung kanyang actual performance exceeded our expectations. It is good for social media usage. It is decent to great for gaming. Yung cameras niya, respectable din for steals talaga. And napakaganda ng kanyang color reproduction. Natural looking. Even if you compare it against some high-end smartphones, okay yung kanyang details. May weakness na siya ng konti, obviously, hindi siya perfect. And yung battery capacity niya, okay din. Ang tagal ng battery life, like what I showed you earlier. Connectivity is stable as well, never had a problem with calls. Obviously, it is not a perfect smartphone, may few weaknesses pa rin siya. Like yung, for example, yung audio recording, hindi siya super clear talaga at all. Pero understandable yun eh. Very forgivable yun eh, especially for a phone price at 9,999 pesos. I would just like to add na napakaswerte nung nakabili nito at 6,999 nung kanyang first day sale. Ang dami pong freebies nun. And nung kanyang 12-12 Lazada sale at 7,999 pesos. Good job Cherry Mobile! And I hope that you will continue to provide more products like this one na very competitive sa kanyang price point. So guys, what do you think? Do you agree with our review? Please let us know in the comments. And if you have questions, just put it down there. And thank you so much for watching. Again, this is Peter of GizGuy.com. Bye-bye!